with you guys got another video on the best security settings for Windows 11. Quite a few people ask me about the settings, so I thought I'd go through and show you some of the best practices that you can do for your version of Windows. So first off, it goes without saying that Windows updates is super important because you're going to be getting all the latest security updates to keep your system safe. Now you will see a little rocker button there saying get the latest updates as soon as they're available, and uh, you'll be one of the first to get updates, the latest security updates, and also improvements for Windows if you have that rocker button turned on. If you want to opt out of that, you can just turn that off, and you can also set your updates to manual to update every, say, five to six weeks, so that way you're not uh, pushing updates on your system that might have bugs in them or problems with them. You can always keep an eye on it and then update when you're ready to update. But as long as you keep your security updates uh, updated on a regular basis, you should be good to go. Now, before we continue on with this video, I just want to have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 10 or Windows 11 Pro OEM key, then check out the links in the video description. Set up an account with CD Key Sales and use my promo code uh, capital B, capital R, 09, and apply this to your order and get a 30% discount on all your purchases. And once you've done that, they will send you your product and you can then Remove that annoying watermark that you may be seeing on the bottom right hand corner of your computer by using that method. Anyway, with that said, let's get back to the tutorial. So next up, we're going to go into settings and we're going to go to uh, security and uh, privacy. Inside here, we're going to go to Windows security. Now, depending on whether you're running Windows Defender or whether you're running a third party antivirus program will determine what you see here. If you're running a third party uh, antivirus program, you might see something like this where Malwarebytes is actually running on here, but you can still enable uh, this setting inside here, which is going to be helping you uh, to keep your PC safe. This is what's called periodic scanning, and it's going to run alongside your uh, Malwarebytes or other antivirus that you have running on here. If you go to the settings here, you'll see that you won't be able to run any scans here like this because your third party antivirus is running on the system and controlling all of your PC. Whereas if you don't have any third party antivirus and you want to run Windows Defender, then you can do and you can run some other scans, which I'll show you in a second. But if you do run a third party antivirus program like Malwarebytes or Avast or any of the other ones like ESET or anything like that, then obviously you want to be running regular scans on your computer to make sure that there's no nasties that have slipped through the net and managed to get themselves onto your computer. You can do this preventative maintenance on your PC on a regular basis, say once a month, and do a complete scan and clean out all your temporary files and all that sort of stuff. Now, if we go back into Windows Security again, I've removed uh, Malwarebytes now, and you should now see that we do have something looking like this, which is our antivirus program from Microsoft. Now you have a bunch of different scan options. I would advise you to run a full scan at least once a month just to make sure nothing has slipped through the net. And this will be scanning all of the drives on your computer, especially if you've been moving data around. You want to make sure you're scanning those to make sure there's nothing that's uh, managed to slip through the net and got onto your computer. So run a full system scan on that main system. I would say the most important one is your system drive, which is where your Windows is installed and uh, you can remove any nasties uh, away or delete them or even quarantine them if you wish. Now, once you've done this, you've also got some other options available to you, which I'll show you here, which is the Microsoft Defender Antivirus Offline Scan. This is the one further down here. And what this will do is it will basically uh, run a scan offline. So you can click on Scan Now, click Scan, and the PC will restart automatically and it will then do a offline scan. And this is great if you have malicious software or nasty uh, viruses on the system that are quite difficult to remove. Using the offline scan can actually remove these a lot easier uh, by using this method. You can also use Kaspersky Rescue CD and other ones like that. There's a ton of them out there, and this will also do the same job. But again, I would prefer to use a Kaspersky Rescue disk if you've got. Uh, quite a few nasties on there that you can't remove, I would definitely go with that route rather than using the Microsoft method. Again, using another uh, piece of software like uh, Online Scanner from ESET, 
this is going to be a secondary line of defense where you can run a scan with this to make sure that you haven't missed anything with uh, Windows Defender. And this will pick up any sort of leftovers as well. So it's important that you uh, check with two different types of software. That way you can be more sure that you are uh, clean and have a 100% clean system. You've got a full scan here and a custom scan and a quick scan. Do a full scan on your system. I would recommend you do that and make sure, especially the Windows operating system, you definitely want to be doing that and making sure there's no nasties on the system. It does take a bit of time, but it's worth doing. And again, you can do potentially unwanted applications. I would enable that feature and run that scan and uh, let that run, okay? And there is other tools out there you can use like Hitman Pro and a bunch of other ones if you want to run a, a secondary scanner tool on your system. So let's go ahead and go back into settings here and assume that you're running uh, Windows Defender on your system. So go to Windows Security here, and we're going to open this up. And there's a bunch of features inside here that you need to enable if you're running Windows Defender on your system here. So what we're going to do is app and browse and control here, and this will uh, block potentially unwanted applications and downloads from a dodgy sites where they're trying to force you to download a certain file. This will hopefully block a lot of that and it's important to have that enabled. Another one to have enabled is the device security here. This is the memory integrity. This does a block over 60% of malware on your computer. If you're going out there in the wild, there's plenty of malware out there that exists, and uh, this will block 60% of those or more, uh, stopping them from infecting your computer. It's important to use these modern-day uh, security features on your operating system. Now, a lot of people say this impacts gameplay and things like that. I've not seen any proof in that at all, uh, and that's because I'm using a modern-day computer. But if you're using an old computer, maybe that is the case. But on a modern-day computer, I don't see why you should have this off. It's a really decent uh, feature to have on, and it blocks a lot of malicious code, and it's a really decent feature to have enabled Smart App Control was another one on here, and we also have the uh, phishing uh, protection on here as well. You want to turn these features on. There's quite a few new features coming out with uh, the Windows security features. You want to turn all of these on, and this will keep you a lot more safe uh, when you're using your computer. Again, if we go back uh, to the bottom bit here, you can see this one is already being managed by my administrator. That's because I run some sort of script on here to show you guys what scripts do but again they can cause you loads of problems like this where it will disable stuff but enable all of these security features in here and if you are seeing any of that managed by your administrator then you've run sort of de-bloating scripts or some sort of script on your pc another one to make sure is your firewall is running here it's important to leave your firewall on and you can block incoming connections by putting a check mark in here Again, I wouldn't advise putting this on because it might block a lot of stuff that you want coming in uh, if you're doing a lot of other different stuff on your PC. So for some people, they won't want incoming connections. But if you do, then obviously don't enable this feature here. Again, I would advise you to get a better firewall than what Windows offers. And again, these come uh, packed with any sort of top branded antivirus like ESET or Bitdefender or Kaspersky. They will have their own a firewall built into their software if you get the internet security version and it's a really must have if you want to protect yourself from ransomware and other nasty stuff that is out there in the wild so let's have a look at the isolated uh, browsing you can see here we can enable the microsoft defender application guard here i'll show you that in a little bit later on but you can see there has been some stuff on here that is blocked but this is a virtual machine and i've been doing a lot of testing on on these uh, devices so you can see going through here, just go through and make sure you enable all of the uh, security features, including the ransomware protection, which is on this device. Also data encryption. A lot of people uh, who are paranoid like to enable the BitLocker feature if you're running Windows 10 Pro or Windows 11 Pro editions or above. And you can enable these features and these will encrypt your drive. The biggest problem with this, a lot of people seem to forget their code or their key, and it's a bit of a nightmare to recover uh, these if you uh, don't know what you're doing. Again, I would tie this with your Microsoft account. A lot of people are not going to want to hear that because obviously they want to disconnect from Microsoft. 
But if you are going to be using BitLocker, it's best to save this to your Microsoft account and have it linked. And that way, if you forget your uh, key to unlock it, then you can always check your Microsoft account and it will be tied and synced to that and it will be easier to recover. Inside your Windows features here, you're going to have a couple of little features that you can enable, which I will talk about a little bit later on as well. But you can see here the Microsoft Defender application guard is there. And we also have Sandbox and other ones. I'll show you those a little bit later on. Let's go back into the system area here. And remote desktop goes without saying you want to disable remote desktop from your PC. It's important that you don't allow anyone to connect in from the outside world. Uh, it doesn't matter who they are. They have no right of being on your PC. So always block any sort of remote connections to your PC. Additional settings under storage here, you will see another bit locker here. Let me just quickly show this so you understand where I'm going with this one. Disks and volumes inside here, you'll see your disks and volumes. And we're talking about the C drive here. So what I'll do is I'll quickly show you what I was on about when I'll say sync it to your Microsoft account. This will be an account that you log into and it will be synced there. And if you forget your password, you can easily recover it. By using that method it's the most easiest way of recovering your drive i see so many people coming on discord on my discord server asking for help with bitlocker as encrypted their drive and stuff like that and now they've forgotten the code and they can't uh, access their drive so use this method instead now i don't personally use bitlocker on my own system i don't actually encrypt my drives i find it a little bit too much but some people do want that extra protection and this is how you would enable it. You can come in here and turn on BitLocker right here on the C drive, as you can see here. Turn this on and click this, and it will open up another box and take you to the BitLocker page. Or you can search for BitLocker inside the search. There's quite a few ways of getting to this here. This will open up right here, and you can see BitLocker is off on my C drive. And to turn it on, you would click on Turn on BitLocker. It's that simple. If you see this message here, it means you've got something mounted. And uh, I'm just going to quickly dismount this. And we'll go back here and I'll click on it and uh, it will then open up and it should let us uh, use the BitLocker. So let's click on the turn on BitLocker here and it should now check the PC configuration. And once it's done, you should now see right here, save to your Microsoft account. This is what I'd advise you to do. It's super easy and that way you can always recover your system. If you save a file or you save it or print that key, or you, and you lose that piece of document, it's it's gone, and it's going to be very difficult to get back in. So always uh, have a safe method of recovery. Now, obviously, another controversial one would be to sign in with your Microsoft account. This will give you enhanced security. A lot of people are going to dismiss that and don't want to do it. I use both Microsoft accounts and uh, local accounts. Another thing to do is set up your password. I'd advise you to do fingerprint recognition, or you can do facial recognition, or PIN or whatever it may be, but if you've got a lot of sensitive stuff on your PC, it's always good to have a password on here to protect yourself. Uh, dynamic lock is another good one to do, allow Windows to lock your device automatically when you're away. That's another a good uh, security measure that you can use on Windows, which is another new feature there, and I'd advise you to use that as well. And let's move on to the ransomware protection. It's not the best on Windows, to be honest with you. You're much better to use a third-party antivirus program like ESET or uh, Bitdefender or Kaspersky to keep you safe. Windows does have this controlled folder access, and it's been proven that uh, ransomware will just go on and encrypt all of your data if this is on. It does block some of them, but most of the time it, it fails pretty badly. And again, but if you want to toggle this on and you don't have any other option, then toggle this on. You can see this system is managed by my administrator. That's because I made some script videos the other day. And this is another problem that people fall foul to. They run scripts online and they end up can't enable certain features because they're grayed out and they're controlled by the administrator. So if you're one of them people that keeps doing that sort of stuff and asking for help, stop using scripts because that's what's causing it. But let's move on to the next bit which was the sandbox and the app guard. I just want to quickly show this. So you can type inside here, Windows features or turn Windows features on or off, and then we can go there. And inside here, you will see a couple of areas which you can toggle on. And these are for your app guard. 
Uh, this is a grayed out area because I run that script. But you can see Microsoft Defender Application Guard is a definite must have. Toggle that on and put the check mark in. It will ask you to reboot your PC and that will enable that feature on your PC. And that will show up in your Windows uh, security. Sandbox is another great feature that you can enable. Again, you can see it's grayed out here because I'm on virtualization. And uh, But basically, enable this feature, and this gives you the Windows Sandbox, gives you a safe area uh, for your computer. If you want to see a video on any of this stuff, let me know in the comments section below. I'll be happy to make videos on this topic if you wish. Uh, but enable that feature. That's a definite must-have if you want to uh, learn about Windows Sandbox. Let me know. Now, apologies for quickly skipping over some of this stuff because these topics are a video on their own. And again, uh, I'm just giving you as much information as I can. We're up to nearly 16 minutes already. And uh, I just want to try and give you as much information as I can in one video. And if you want to see any videos on any of these topics, then let me know in the comment section. Go into your account section here. It's important that you set up an account. And again, I've talked about this before. It's not 100% foolproof, but running your system on a standard user is much better than running it as administrator. If you're running as administrator, things are just going to run, and a lot of people find that a lot easier. But again, malware finds it a lot easier to run as well. So it's always best to run as a standard user. You can create an account. I've made videos on this before. If you want to see an updated video, also let me know in the comments section below. But basically, what you need to do is create an account and have this as an admin account, and you can turn the other account into a standard user. And anytime you go to install anything yourself on that account, because you're running as a standard user, it's gonna ask for the administrator password, and you would then have to put that password in just to install stuff and do certain things which require changes to the operating system. It's not foolproof, but it's another security layer that you can add to your computer. And again, all these, Things add up and they add to a much safer environment for you to use when you're using your computer. Windows is very secure. A lot of people uh, trash Windows and say it's not that secure. It's very, very secure. But the problem is it's always user error. You have to remember people compare it to Linux and uh, there's not a lot of people using Linux, to be honest with you, compared to how many Windows users there is out there. And again, you can understand why. Uh, uh, Windows is attacked so much because it has such a big user base and that there's more chance of people falling foul to their scams and their tricks. So you can see here, we do have administrator and standard user. Best to use standard user and click OK, and then you can then uh, set up an, a, an admin account as well uh, for yourself. And that way, you're going to be a little bit more safer when you're running uh, that. I've made a video on this before. You could just check my channel. For that if you want to see an updated video let me know again backing up your computer is also important people just don't back up their computer enough and let me tell you if you had backups in three different locations off-site and uh, two locations on site uh, and you got hit with ransomware it wouldn't really hurt you as much because you can put your system back up and running and have all your data back up and running it will be a bit of an inconvenience but you wouldn't be hurt as much as if you don't have a backup and you get hit with ransomware and you only have that copy what's on that computer and it now encrypts the whole of your drive and you're completely done for. So remember, backup, backup, backup is still important in 2023. And a lot of companies have moved away from that terminology and they try to go down the route of blocking ransomware and try to go down the defense route when it's much easier just to back your data up and that way you can just uh, new can pave your system, put Windows back on, and basically that's it. You, you'll be back up and running with your data back installed on that PC. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it for this video. Uh, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. Also, if you fancy joining our Discord server, the link is in the video description, and uh, I'll shall see you over there, or I'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks again for watching. Have a lovely weekend. Bye for now.